So I'm sitting there eating my second blueberry pop tart for the day watching peak anime when I get a text from my best friend, Paul. Don't you want to look like Tengen for SakuraCon? There's only one person I could think of to take things super seriously. <laughs> Now, Saitama has this beautiful bald head for a very specific reason. He does 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and a 10-kilometer run every single day. And at 25 years old, 5 foot 9 inches, 155 pounds, 154 pounds, with moderate exercise, okay, he is very lazy. And for him to maintain that weight, this is our macro split. 154 grams of protein, 324 grams of carbs, and 69 nice grams of fat, total of 2,450 calories. But here's what I actually want to do. I want to make sure that I am as cheap as Saitama is. So everything that I buy for today is going to be on sale. My friends, it's finally time to eat like One Punch Man. Now that we have a grasp of Saitama's diet, we have to figure out what to make, but with a bit of a twist because Saitama, he's cheap. Good luck today from Rachel. She knew I was doing this video today. Here's what we're gonna do first. This is my favorite dice roll box. I don't get to use it often. This is a standard D20. Since Saitama is cheap, if I roll a one through 14, I get $10 to use today. If I roll a 15 to 19, I get $15. And if I roll a nat 20, a natural 20, I get $20 today. I, I love rolling dice. 16! Whoa, we get $15. There it is, 16. I get $16 for my budget for this entire day. But then Rachel left me this note. Good luck today. I can feel that there's other stuff under it. She trolls me so hard sometimes. If you fail a challenge in two minutes, you lose $2. Fail a challenge. Oh, she's talking about the exercises. Oh my God, hold on. If you complete a challenge in those two minutes, I get $2 to my budget. This could be very good or very bad. Thank you, honey for the encouragement, challenge number one. The 10 kilometer run. According to the rules, I have one hour to finish this 10 kilometer run or I lose $2. My nose is running because it's so cold out here. Oh, I hate running. Now, because it's about 35 degrees outside, I decided to run to my gym and then finish the run there. And at this point at 27 minutes, I've only run two and a half miles and I still have four miles to go. At 50 minutes in, I've only run three and a half miles and I'm not confident in keeping this $2. I really want to finish strong. So I'm pushing myself to the absolute limit to try to break four miles before the end of this. And even if I'm going to be losing my $2, at least I hit my own goal of breaking four miles. Now with $13 left to my name for this challenge, I only have two minutes to finish 100 push-ups, but really pushing myself to try to get 100 push-ups in two minutes is something I've never done. This challenge has already taught me that I am not in the shape that I really want to be in, and that's kind of eye-opening for me. And after two minutes and four seconds, I hit around 55 push-ups, which means that we failed this challenge and our $2. Two more dollars. Now I have to try the 100 sit-ups in two minutes challenge. I only have $11 to my name, so losing $2 here is going to hurt. I want to make sure I push myself to really finish off this challenge and do those 100 sit-ups. But I'm really starting to feel it now and having to pause in between a few sets to try to make sure I hit that 100 sit-ups. I'm slowing down quite a bit, and all I'm thinking about is how on earth am I going to make some really good meals with no budget. But after two minutes, I'm only able to hit around 65 sit-ups, which means two more dollars are off the budget. Finally, I have to do 100 squats in two minutes. I'm praying to the thigh goddess that is Chun-Li that I can actually actually complete this and keep $2 of my budget. And even this proved to be right down to the wire. I was able to finish 100 squats in two minutes, leaving myself with only one second left, which means I get $11 for today's budget. As I'm editing this video, I realized I was actually supposed to gain $2 from the squat challenge by defeating it, but instead I kept my budget at $11 instead of going up to $13. So sorry, Paul, sucks to suck. You get $11 for this entire video. Please subscribe for Food Truck. After all of that, I still had to walk home, which wasn't very enjoyable because now I had to think about how to make all of this food on an $11 budget. And the best way to do that is with a nice cold shower. <laughs> Stupid. Now, with my wife's interference, we have $11 after failing so many of those challenges. So there's only one place I wanna shop at today. Now, the only place that has sales all of the time is Winco. Right when I walked in, I found this beautiful organic ground beef for that is not part of our budget. We cannot have that. But I found onions at 88 cents a pound. So this one onion was about 25 cents. This one jalapeno was 10 cents. I found instant udon for $2 just because I really wanted udon. I also found whatever these are and then immediately went over to the cabbage, which was around $1.20 for two 
two pounds worth of cabbage. I also found some green onions for about $1.20, which was a little expensive, and then came over to the proteins, which if you pick up chicken thighs and you buy boneless, skinless, it's gonna be more expensive than buying bone in. To make sure I had enough money for some of my proteins, I had to go through my basket. I really wanted to pick up this two pounds of lean pork, and to do that, I had to put the udon back because that was a little bit expensive. And then I remember that Winco has an amazing bulk section having everything you need for super cheap. This long grain white rice was 78 cents a pound. The sushi rice was a little more expensive, so I went with the long grain white rice instead. One pound of this, 78 cents, were locked and loaded. I made my way over to the checkout stand, scanned everything up, and my total was $8.85 before scanning this thing, bringing it over to $9.10. So thanks to Winco, I was able to come out of this with this entire bag for our food for the day at $9.15. But there's a few items that I have to add to this. We're just gonna math it out. So I'm back from the grocery store and we spent $9.15 without buying things really in bulk. This is all we were able to get. The extra $1.85 is going to come in later for dinner because it is actually one in the afternoon and I need breakfast. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Now it's breakfast, let's make lunch. Now I'm gonna prep out everything here in a certain way because I have a very good idea of what I wanna do for both lunch and dinner. We're only gonna get two meals out of this. Now I actually don't need all of this rice. This is a significant amount. So I'm actually gonna do just about one cup worth of rice. Let's do a cup and a half. I'm gonna give this a quick rinse. As far as water goes, I'm just using the knuckle method because I do have to kind of estimate with this. Once I have it up to the first knuckle, I'm gonna throw it in the rice steamer. Now before anyone says, well, Paul, you have a very expensive rice steamer. No, I'm not counting equipment and things like that because realistically if you're cooking at home you should have maybe a pot or a pan I'm just being lazy now for the green onions these are gonna be used in both dishes so I do have the pleasure of being able to cut all of it right now because we don't need this till later I'm gonna place this into my container with a bit of paper towel to help keep it fresh and dry longer so this way it doesn't go bad very quickly next regular onion now this is also gonna be used two different ways I'm gonna use this smaller half because I cut it wrong for the second dish of the evening. Someone in the comments a while ago said if I take a wet towel and I place it next to my cutting area, it'll absorb some of the onion enzymes and thus not causing me to cry. I'm gonna test it. Now, since I am cutting the onion two ways, I'm gonna have two separate containers. First way is just actually gonna be like a brunoise, kind of a small dice. You can really do whatever you want here. This one's gonna be for the dinner later tonight. So you can be a little more lenient with it. One onion piece, done. Now for the second onion, I think you guys will really enjoy this. Okay, it's kind of helping, I feel like, but also not. Or maybe this onion is just really strong. So the first dish for lunch is actually gonna be a derivative of something that we learned in Food Wars. I'm actually gonna be making a style of the chalupin steak, but with pork. So this will help tenderize it, you know, why not? I'm gonna start by dicing my onions, making sure they're fairly, fairly small, get them into a nice pile, and then we're gonna mince these quite a bit. And after a few minutes and one good cry later, yes, the towel I feel like is still helping. Our minced onions are done. Place this into this container. Put a lid on these so I can stop crying. Now for the pork, we're gonna do this two different ways. They already cut them into slices for us and like even-ish pieces. So we'll just say that this is all for lunch right now. This pork, I'm just gonna put away. We'll use this later. For this one, I am gonna score this pork. So this way the onion enzymes get into inside that pork meat. Flip it around, do the same thing to the other side. Now once I have both of my pork pieces scored, get your minced onions that we just chopped up. Throw this right on top of your pork. Now once this is fully covered, we're gonna let this sit for just about an hour or so. Last piece of prep, aside from the jalapeno, which we can do later, is all of this cabbage, because I need cabbage for both dishes. Cut it in half, remove the core, cut it into half again, so you're cutting it into quarters. And then I am using a mandolin here. You can absolutely just cut this with a knife, but I like the thinness you can get. You see that with the mandolin? This probably will fit, but this will make me feel full, which is good. And you know what? I'm just gonna slice the jalapeno now because I have my mandolin still. Okay, jalapeno, done. Now after an hour or so, it's actually, it's actually been like two hours, not gonna lie. It's time to make all this pork. I can already see what this onion has done to this pork. It's almost made it slightly opaque. So we're just gonna scrape off quite a bit of this onion. That looks good enough. All of this, we're gonna cook up in a second. Now we're gonna take all of this pork, this beautiful one pound of pork, season this with a good amount of black pepper, and a nice hefty pinch of salt, large saute pan, just a touch of oil. Now remember when I said that I had about $2 worth of stuff to use? It was actually about $4, but all that blood that's supposed to go to your brain went to your... <gasps> We're accounting for like salt, pepper, oil, and a few more things for dinner, which I'll tell you guys about when we get to dinner. Once that oil's been heating up for just like a minute or so, we're gonna take our pork, place this right into the pan, 
Now because this is so thin and it's scored, it shouldn't take that long to cook. Now season the other side. I'm only gonna have to flip the pork once because it is, it is getting a nice char on there from that onion because onions do have sugar. So I'm trying to keep that in mind so it doesn't burn, but this is looking really, really nice right now. To make sure this cooks properly, I am gonna throw a lid on it and just a bit of water. And I'm just gonna let this steam for that last five minutes so it fully cooks. Now the pork has been steaming for about five or six minutes. It looks pretty ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and place this onto this plate that I'm gonna actually use for dinner. Look at that pork. But now for this liquid, I'm actually gonna let this reduce just a bit and we're gonna throw the onions into this. I know I'm changing up the traditional chali bean steak, but honestly, that's what I do all the time anyway. Place this into this bowl right here. Plop this right back on. Okay, you're gonna still need that pan. Touch of water. Remember all that cabbage we did? Cabbage in. That's a lot of, that's a lot of cabbage. Now we're gonna saute the cabbage until this is nice and soft too, because this is gonna be one of the garnishes for this dish. Take all this cabbage, plop it into the bowl next to the onions. This is so much volume right now. Now, well, you know what? We're not gonna rinse this out. We're gonna leave all the flavors in here because I'm gonna be using suyu. Yes, I lean on this pretty often, but I have had this bottle for, <sighs> It's not expired. I've had this bottle for like six months. It's in the description below, but it's so cheap and it has so much flavor. Now after this is reduced for just a couple of minutes, it kind of gets thickened up. Let's, let's plate up. Grab the bowl with all of the juices in it because that's gonna be delicious. Got all my rice back here. Admittedly, I made a lot of rice. This is only about half of the rice that I cooked. I may have miscalculated how much I needed. Now we get to slice into this beautiful pork that's been resting. You know, we're just gonna go right on top. Yep, second pork loin right on on top. Now we can garnish this cabbage. Then giant scoop of onion. Then our reduced suyu. I'm having a moment, okay? I'm so excited to eat this. Now admittedly, as amazing as this looks, I really wish I had umeboshi that I could include in my price. I have some in the fridge. I should put some umeboshi with this. Those of you who are not aware, umeboshi is pickled plum. You know what? We're gonna add this to our budget. That's 10 cents worth of umeboshi. There's lunch, my friends. This ridiculous plate of food. I actually threw the green onions on just now. Um, I kind of may have forgotten to put them on, but I'm going into this pork. Cheers. It's super tender. Oh, wow. Even though it's kind of a drier cut of meat, like there isn't a lot of fat on this pork, it's still fairly juicy. You can kind of see a little bit of liquid coming out, but it's super tender. It tastes of onion. It has that suyu flavor, just for you guys. We're gonna have a Food Wars moment. Okay, we got a little bit of everything. This is the bite right here. Cheers. It needs the plum. Oh my God, it's so good. I'm gonna take this down and I gotta prep dinner somehow. I don't know what I'm doing for that. Not gonna lie, that amount of pork and rice absolutely knocked me out, but I'm ready to have dinner. Now I had a thought, do not say anything. Don't wanna hear it. I have an open box of curry and one bundle of noodles. I did not buy these today. Anyone wanna tell them? Anyone wanna tell them about the budget? I'm gonna tell you why. That was my villain. Whatever. These noodles came in a three pack for $1.80. That means one bundle of noodles is about 60 cents. Golden curry comes in two of these giant packages and we're using one of these quadrants. Now, according to my calculations, this comes out to about 30 cents per quadrant. So with the noodles and this, we have 90 cents. Remember when I didn't spend all of my budget? It's to be able to do things like this. Now that that's out of the way, let's make some noodles. Boiling water in your saute pan. Noodles go right in. This shouldn't take too long at all. Well, that's going. Maybe I'll open up this curry, huh? This is all we're using. Look at this square. This is about one portion. Once the noodles are done, we're just gonna drain these and work on the other ingredients. Now, the way I'm gonna prepare this pork is a little bit different than we just did. The, the hard part with this is this pork is actually pretty lean and I really wanted to treat it almost like ground pork. But since it's so lean, I think what we're gonna do instead is we're just gonna try to essentially just mash it up with our knife. So we're gonna cut this into big old chunks first and then we're going to cut this on the cutting board until we get something that resembles ground pork. Ooh, wait. I can just use the food processor. That's good. This is perfect for what I wanna do with it. Now, same saute pan. A little bit of oil, just right in there. Once my oil is hot, we're going in with our onions. Saute these up a little bit. I also actually have the rough chopped cabbage. We're not gonna use the finely shredded stuff, which is, there's still plenty of it in there. I can use that for another recipe. So I'm still under budget. Ha. I'm actually pretty proud of the fact that I'm under budget. Even after failing three of the exercises, a little splash of water to help it. Toss in some jalapenos. Now while this is cooking over here, I'm gonna take the little, bl the little bl blick. What's a blick? Brick 
of curry. I'm gonna chop this up so this way it incorporates better. Now once this is nicely sauteed and the cabbage has softened up, we're just gonna turn this off and we're gonna remove it out of here because we need the pan still. We take our entire pound of pork, season this with a good hefty pinch of salt, a bunch of black pepper in here too. I actually went around the seven minute mark on this. It didn't take too long to cook down this pork. I had a little bit of water boiling on the side just so this way everything stays nice and hot. Let this come up to a boil again. And once you're at that point where it's starting to boil, this is when we're gonna throw in our curry. Put in a little bit at a time, make sure that that curry fully dissolves. While that's reducing a little bit, then we throw in all of our vegetables. Once you add in your vegetables though, you don't wanna cook it too much longer because they can overcook and become a little bit too mushy. And then finally, toss in our very small amount of noodles. Look at all of this food. Say we plate this up, it's just gonna be a pile of noodles and pork. Remember all those green onions I cut? Mm -hmm. Right on top, money. And remember, if you wanna see something like this coming to a face near you, once we hit a million subscribers, I'm buying a food truck and I'm making a lot of this anime food for you guys. So make sure you get subscribed because I really want that to happen. And there, my friends, is dinner, One Punch Man style. As cheap as I could make it. Well, not as cheap as I could make it. We did use almost all of that $11. $13. But I'm really happy with how this looks. Cheers. Oh. This is fantastic. It was easier to make than lunch, and I like it better. It's literally, it's creamy, it's spicy, it's tangy. This is probably, uh, as I die on my noodles. This is probably enough for two people, but not today. If you wanna see us try the One Punch Man challenge, click over here. My name is Chef PK, and remember, always keep playing with your food.